when i recently went to my old home i observed that there is a small crack in the ceiling fan because nobody stays there i thought not to replace the fan when i carefully observed that i noted that it's an edge crack and based on the loading condition the crack tries to open up and therefore it satisfy the mode one loading condition i thought why not to take this material and test in my laboratory to determine the fracture toughness so that i can get to know for how much time this fan can sustain so i take the material from a similar material i take the piece from a similar material and brought in my laboratory there are different standards that are available for determining the fracture toughness test fracture toughness i thought to start with the mode 1 plane strain fracture toughness testing here mode 1 i explained that it's when it it occurs when the crack tries to open up and the plane strain for achieving the plane strain condition the thickness has to be more than 2.5 k1c divided by sigma y to the power square if we have an estimate of fracture toughness and yield strength then we can determine the thickness that is required for the mode 1 plane strain fracture toughness testing so the details of mode 1 plane strain fracture toughness testing is mentioned in ASTM E399 standard this ASTM E399 standard is based on linear elastic fracture mechanics and it is restricted to materials with limited ductility in this case there are two type of specimens that are present in ASTM E399 standard that first one is CT specimen and the second is three point bent specimen so the ct specimen that is compact tension here if this is the sample with two circular holes the loading is in the tensile direction and for three point bent specimen if this is the notch these are two supporting grips and here the loading this is the loading roller the fixture of the three point bend they try to load the sample in this direction so these are the two supporting rollers these are basically the grips for proper alignment of the fixture if this is the fixture it comes in this way so for proper alignment we have some grips in the specimen so after making such kind of specimen here first the notch is introduced and then the sharpest possible crack is introduced using fatigue loading and upon doing the test using utm and the required fixtures we can get three type of curves the type 
curve is obtained when a ductile metal is tested. Type third curve is obtained when a very brittle elastic material is tested. In order to obtain a valid K1C value, a few rules have to be followed that are present in ASTM E399 standard. So the first is, in order to determine a valid K1C value, a conditional value of fracture toughness has to be determined that is denoted by KQ. And in order to determine KQ value, we should know PQ value that is conditional value of load. So for PQ determination, we first of all determine the PS value. And to determine the PS value, we take a secant from the origin to the we take a secant from the origin with a slope that is 5% lower than the tangent of the curve tangent is OA so whatever the slope OA has we take 5% we take slope as 5% lower than that of the OA line. And wherever the curve intersects the, the secant, wherever the secant line intersects the curve, that point is called PS. If all the points in the curve preceding PS is lower than PS, then that PS point can be written as PQ. And if the points preceding PS is, is more than PS value, then the maximum point preceding PS can be written as PQ. In both type 2 and type 3, we can see that below PS point, there is a maximum value that is called PQ. After determining PQ, we can determine KQ. But a few rules have to be followed. The, f the rule is if once you determine the PS value, the load corresponding to PS, take 80% of PS value and the distance between the tangent to the curve that you call X1. And the distance between tangent and curve that is xs at ps so if x1 is greater than one fourth of xs then in that case this material will be too ductile and two ductile samples cannot be tested through plane strain fracture toughness testing and if x1 is less than one fourth of xs only then you use the plane strain fracture toughness testing otherwise go for elastic plastic fracture mechanics the rules are mentioned in ASTM E1820 standard so there is one more addition in ASTM E399 recently that is if after reaching the maximum load we know the curve falls down here this is the maximum load curve falls down so this is the maximum load this is the maximum load here and here pq is the maximum load so if p max divided by pq is greater than 1.1 we cannot obtain a valid k1c value so to determine a valid k1c value our p max by pq should be less than 1.1 after following these rules we take the pq value after we check that all these rules are followed we take the pq value and determine the kq value for compact tension specimen this is the kq formula and for the bent specimen this is the formula now once kq is determined we calculate 2.5 kq divided by sigma y to the power 2 
here kq is the conditional value fracture toughness sigma y is the 0.2 percent offset yield strength in tension curve so this value should be lower than ligament length ligament length is w minus a if this is the three point bent specimen and this is the crack length and this is the width of the specimen then w minus a is the ligament length so ligament length should be more than this quantity and once these rules are followed and yes if ligament length is more than this quantity we can write kq equal to k1c and whatever value we will get that is a valid k1c value